Welcome to Stick at Night. I'm your freeholder, Anthony L. Romano, representing the cities of Hoboken and Jersey City. And today's uh, show has an interesting guest. Uh, everybody talks about drones. So what we have with us today is the founding chief executive officer of Aero Defense, um, a new company. And the CEO here is Linda Ziemba. Linda, welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. There's uh, so much talk and controversy about drones. Mm -hmm. uh, there's military use, there's police use, and there's private use. And uh, you tell us how you, well, Linda, where's your company located and how right. it came about? Right. Uh, so we are located in New Jersey. Our developers are employees, and they wrote every bit of our proprietary patented code. Um, we're not opposed to drones. We think drones do a lot of really good things, but uh, we do think that there's risk from them. Um, if they fly over places where they shouldn't, like over people at a stadium, um, and uh, correctional facilities are a big part of our customer base now. The, uh, the Amazons and the uh, UPSs who want to get into drone delivery could learn a bit about um, delivery, drug delivery to uh, facilities. Linda, where is, your, where is your headquarters of your company? We are in Monmouth County, New Jersey, in Homedale. Um, that's our first location. We'll be expanding or relocating um, in the coming year as we grow. We expect. Now, you mentioned to me, which really caught my attention, and one of the reasons I asked you to come on the show, you talked about your connection to the New York City Police Department. Mm -hmm. So please tell us what you can on that. So a lot of people, there are, it's surprisingly a competitive space, drone detection. Um, there are a lot of claims that have been made. So folks want to do a lot of tests. So NYPD has evaluated um, our system and tested it against another system in the environment where a terror attack is is likely to occur it's it's not going to occur out in the desert where a lot of technologies excel it's going to occur in a city in what they call an urban canyon because the buildings are high the streets are fairly narrow and um, it's there's a lot of uh, radio frequency, RF, which is what the drones use to communicate, to fly on. Um, it's, so it makes it a very challenging uh, effort. So they're, they're just, um, just to be clear, they have, they're not endorsing, they haven't committed, they're evaluating um, our technology for use. Well, now, the NYPD has their own drones, correct? Mm -hmm. So what you would be hired to do would be to what? Add to that or to detect something? So our system is a detection system. So we detect both the drone, but also the pilot. So that's why many local law enforcement um, agencies are interested in our product is because you, people can't shoot them down or do anything. That's gonna cause more problems than the drone itself. So the best mitigation technique is probably gonna turn out to be finding that pilot and strongly encouraging them to stop flying. So our system will detect both the, the pilot controller flying it and the drone and then alert and send location information um, to the proper security staff. So for those out in the audience that aren't fluent in drone technology mm -hmm. or terminology, the net pilot is the person that is uh, operating the drone, I'm mm -hmm. assuming. Okay. Yep. And yep. There's a controller. It, it can be a cell phone. It can be a joystick kind of controller. And that controller sends commands up to the drone to tell it where to go. And the drone sends back co uh, communication saying, all right, I'm here. I've moved to the next spot. And it also sends the video back. 
So we detect on the physical signal level. There are a lot of RF systems that are out there that are highly controversial because if a system takes anything, and you'll know this as a police captain, if you take any information out of a signal without a warrant, that's violating privacy laws. So our system is different because we're just looking at physical signals. It's also called spectrum sensing, or uh, like just detecting the power level that something's out there. Well, right now you can go to a store and most anybody can buy a drone. Yep. Correct? Um, the, the laws aren't really stringent yet, uh, but as far as around airports and uh, any other uh, mm -hmm. secure facilities, there are rules that have to be abided mm -hmm. uh, by it here too. So do you, you are doing anything in Hudson County, in our county? Do you intend to? We have not deployed um, a system in Hudson County yet. We're a young company. We, um, although in drone detection, we're kind of a, a long-term player. We formed the company in 2015 with an idea and by 2017, we deployed our first pilot at uh, the Georgia Department of Corrections. Oh, um, really? In Georgia? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And, and um, so they found out all the way down in Georgia, they found your company. Wow. They did. They did. We had, yes, we had an introduction to them. Um, in 2018, MetLife Stadium commercially deployed our system after pretty intense evaluation and competition for... Uh, now you said MetLife Stadium, that's in conjunction, I'm assuming, with the New Jersey State Police. Um, MetLife, uh, New Jersey State Police um, are called by MetLife Stadium. MetLife Stadium has the system in their command center to, to know when there's an alert, so then they'll radio State Police. Um, is the way that that's set up. So that's now. a very big uh, client, uh, MetLife yes, Stadium. It is. Yes, and it is. What what kind of uh, were there any incidents or anything that you? Oh uh, sure. You, really? Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know what's interesting is there are um, many more incidents at events like concerts and soccer games, um, partially because we think because. Um, they don't know about the rules perhaps as much as a Jets or Giants fan does, um, and they don't have as much to lose. If they get in trouble, they'll get thrown out of their one event. If a Jets or Giants fan gets in trouble, they could get thrown out for a season uh, or permanently evicted. So, well, but, but we haven't done anything in Hudson County yet, although we are in conversations with some people that I can't talk about just yet. So well, when we come back from commercial break, we're going to continue uh, talking to Linda about uh, some of the things that happened already at the MetLife Stadium, because I'm sure the people in the audience would like to hear that. I'm your freeholder, Anthony Romano, and uh, we're going to keep this conversation going about our drone technology. We'll be right back after the commercial break. Thank you. Most women who give birth recover without problems, but any woman can have complications after the birth of a baby. Learn the post-birth warning signs, such as fever, headache, chest pain, shortness of breath, increased bleeding, or thoughts of hurting yourself or someone else. Knowing these can save your life or the life of someone that you love. Trust your instincts. If you feel something is wrong, call and get evaluated by your healthcare provider. If your symptoms get worse or you do not hear back from your physician, call 911 or go to the nearest emergency room. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Voting by mail has never been easier. Just follow these steps to ensure your vote will be counted. Open your envelope. You will find your certificate, return envelope, and official ballot. When casting your ballot, use only a pencil, black, or blue ink, not red. Completely fill in the oval to the right of each selection. When writing in, do not repeat a name printed on the ballot. If torn or damaged, your vote will not be counted. Fold your ballot and place it in the pocket of the certificate before sealing it with the adhesive strip. Do not detach the strip and paper from the certificate. Fill out the required information on the certificate and don't forget to sign. If you are not mailing or delivering your ballot in person, make sure both you and the bearer of the ballot sign your name and address on the certificate and return envelope. 
After that, just place it in the mailbox and your vote will be counted. For more information, you can visit our website at www.hudsoncountyclerk.org or www.hudsoncountynj.org. Hudson TMA reminds you that if you are going to ride your bike after dark, you must wear the proper attire. Can you see me? How about me? It's more difficult to ride at night, but if you have to, make sure you can be seen. Check this out. I'm wearing white, but it's not enough because I'm still difficult to see. No matter what time of day you ride, always wear bright clothing. But at night, you really need to wear reflective or retroreflective gear. If you don't have any, buy some retroreflective tape and put it on your shoes, your jacket, and your helmet. It helps reflect light back to the driver of a car. Make sure your bike has reflectors. And you need a headlight and a tail light. That's the best way to get noticed in the dark. And it's the law. Remember, the sooner a driver can see you and recognize you, the sooner they can react. Welcome back to Stick at Night, and today we have on our show Linda Ziemba, as we said, the founding CEO of Aero Defense, uh, which is a drone contractor. Linda, my question is this, when you detect a drone, what do you do next? What happens? So tell us how the chain of events goes. So it depends. It depends on what our customer wants to happen. So in some situations... Like in Georgia. Tell us the difference between Georgia and MetLife Stadium. Very different. Very different. Um, in Georgia is a correctional facility. Georgia is a correctional facility. So some correctional facilities prefer to have people outside the facility notified. So they'll notify their um, statewide project coordinator, the warden, and the local sheriff. They're the ones who are going to respond to the incident. So the, they are notified by a uh, text message that has a picture of uh, the facility with um, highlight of where the detection signals are coming from. So we also send uh, emails. So that's the um, one extreme. The other extreme is MetLife Stadium has 24-7 uh, command center and they receive a visual and an audible alert uh, with that same picture of where the System so now, is on what, the screen. what usually does the, are, the, are those drones doing? They're taking pictures, or well, give us examples of what can a drone do? Mm -hmm. At a correctional facility, the drone is delivering contraband. It could be cell phones, drugs, really? tobacco, so, and, and what the would biggest it do? fear it just, is weapons. Just would it just drop it, or how mm -hmm. does that work? You um, you get a remote release device, and so from that controller we were talking about. You get your drone to where you've agreed to drop the delivery, and you press a button and it can drop it. Or you could have a hook and on a long string from the drone, mm -hmm. and then the drone will get to the point where the contraband's on the ground, and then the S hook, the pressure's gone, so it releases. So then the drone And flies your technology, away. does that mean that you have a drone watching that drone mm -mm. or is it something tech uh, based in an office? No, no that's a good point, Captain Romano. That's a, another key differentiator for us. Our technology is a small antenna. It's about four inches and four ounces. So it's very nondescript, which is good for security equipment. At a correctional facility, you don't want to call attention to that or at a stadium or at other places where aesthetics are important. Um, some of our competitors have equipment that's the size of a small Volkswagen, like if you're in the military and you're going to actually shoot the drone down, or even a, a, a domestic competitor, the sensors like bowling ball size. And that's a challenge for deployment, for wind load and all, all kinds of things. Um, so that's interesting. Yeah. So at no time do you directly come in contact with the drone itself. 
You, you no. monitor it, and we, then you report mm -hmm. that information. Now, would you, if you see, will you be able to see, for example, if contraband came down, you report that? No, no. We would be able to track a drone and report that there was a drone signal, nothing specific about the drone, because that's the personal identifying information, um, that it is in that flew area. in uh, from a certain point, stayed in a certain point for a while, and then exited. So the logic is if it hovered for a while over the facility, that's probably where the prison, so the prison will go on lockdown. When they detect a drone, they'll put the prison on lockdown, they'll search the grounds, they search the roofs. Um, and MetLife, MetLife Stadium, Stadium what is that? Now, that would be more for cameras? Would they, the drones? It's for the more, pictures. Right, they want pictures. But again, still, the, uh, the agency has to be alerted. Yes, because it's dangerous if you're um, taking pictures over a crowd. There's tremendous radio frequency signals at a tailgating event. So people who have flown their drones very far away in a field don't understand that they're going to probably lose control of the drone and it could fall on someone. Really? Fall, yeah. That's interesting. You can lose control of the drone. What is it, at a certain distance? It, when, when it, yes, but that's not a consistent distance. In a field or in a desert, it could be a mile or two miles. Right, because this, it's wide open. Tailgating at a Jets and Giants game, not so much. Because uh, there's so much interference. What is going to, for example, I know you said you're going to talk to Hudson County Police Chiefs Association, correct? Mm -hmm. What is going to make uh, police departments interested more in your mm -hmm. technology as opposed to your competitors? Mm -hmm. Like, what's going to right. uh, really startle them and whet their appetite? Right. We have a couple of new developments. Um, so I, th I mentioned that our antenna is very small. So. We I'm have, assuming which then makes the cost smaller, or does uh, that increase the cost as opposed to... Well, right, because there's... Yeah, we're, we're generally affordable. I would put us in the affordable technology category. So we can now equip a mobile command a vehicle, a land base or marine base. Operated by you? Or the, no, the, no, uh, no. By, by the, the police department. The, law, the agencies. So we put our equipment in, like... Air, everything else, computer equipment that's in there, and then you run our small antenna up on an, uh, a mast, and um, now you have mobile drone detection that could join permanently deployed uh, systems. So that's gonna excite the local law enforcement that's trying to provide drone detection for events and things like that, and things that are our, our critical infrastructure where they need to extend the network. The other thing that's really exciting that um, I'm just, we'll just say we're announcing it here. We haven't really gone public with this yet. Well, here's a first, ladies and gentlemen there of the you, audience. Yes. In drone technology and detection. Go yeah. ahead. So one of our prospective clients nearby was very concerned about aesthetics and said, we can't put that box out on our poles. So it's a non-starter. So we, uh, my team is amazing. They, they figured out how we can run those antennas over fiber back to a data center which could be miles away. So wow. now you could deploy urban drone detection uh, with these small little antennas run on fiber back to local tech closets or to one centralized command. Well, I'll tell you, Linda, and when we come back from break, I'm going to hear more about your team and uh, your exciting development and how you're going to uh, win over Hudson County mm -hmm. uh, because we always want to be in the forefront of the, anything that makes our citizens of our communities safer. I'm uh, Freeholder Romano, and we'll be back at the commercial break to discuss more about uh, drone technology with the CEO of Air Defense, Linda Ziemba. Thank you. It has actually changed my life. You know, it's wonderful to be in recovery. I'm also a grandpa, a great grandpa. I found joy in being abstinent from use. You know, I'm a family member. I'm a productive member of society. Um, 
I'm a dog owner, things like that. I'm a fiance. So I think that recovery means on such a broad scale, there's so many different layers to what recovery means to me. We're just like everyone else. We have heart and soul. Um, it's just that we've we have the substance abuse disorder and that we're dealing with that. And if anything, it makes us a little bit stronger. The most important thing for people in the community needs to know is that they're just like anyone else and that they don't necessarily want to be doing the things that they're doing and it's a chronic illness and it's a chronic disease that needs to be addressed as so. Welcome back to Stick at Night. Let's continue our discussion with Linda Ziemba from Aero Defense. And we let leaving off, Linda, we we're talking about that new development aesthetically. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mentioned uh, Stevens at the break. Talk to us. Yeah, so uh, the, one of our, not one of our, our most important advantage is the team that we've built. Um, we invested in um, engineering talent, and that talent comes um, uh, largely from Stevens Institute of Technology, which is located in Hoboken. There you go. Just celebrated their 130th anniversary, 1870, even though the family was there a long time before that. Mm -hmm. And they've always been in the forefront. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm proudly to say I have good relations with uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Farden, Farden is a wonderful leader and is chief of staff, uh, Beth mm -hmm. McGrath. So. Uh, so we the, have our development team lead is um, um, getting his, expecting to get his master's in May from Stevens in electrical engineering. Our RF team lead is um, a Stevens master's in electrical engineering graduate. Um, we have uh, a PhD in our electrical engineering from Ole Miss. So that's the core. So that's... So what's your, what's your company employ about? Ten people. About ten people. Ten people. And then we have another developer for the UI. So, so if you say out of ten, that's forty percent. That's on. Um, what made the What made you pick your headquarters to be down there, in uh, in Monmouth? You said, you're in Monmouth County. Mm-hmm. Any Any I reason is that? Oh, you live. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. that's the reason. You're from yeah. Monmouth County. Yeah. Sure. So that's I, understandable. I live. Yes, I live in Monmouth County, and the team is fairly close to there. Um, and then you, I, uh, your prospective clients, you fly out to visit, as you said, in mm -hmm. Georgia. And uh, now with, the, um, uh, with Stevens, are, is Stevens going to possibly empl employ the drone technology? Or? You know, I haven't talked to them about that. But um, I mean, is, it, can, is campuses, it worthwhile campuses, the college campuses, their use? I mean, you have to also know where it's applicable. For example, right. law enforcement's important for right. law enforcement to have that technology, the military. Uh, and as you said, the stadiums to be covered are obviously right. important, the uh, correctional facilities. Uh, does the, the campuses fit into that? I believe that campuses that have big sta uh, athletic stadiums, outdoor athletic stadiums and tailgating are probably first. I think in the long run, Sure, Michigan, all campuses, Notre Dame, Rutgers. Alabama, Rutgers. Um, but so, our, Correctional facilities, stadiums, um, critical infrastructure. Critical infrastructure. That was like, I was going to ask yeah. you. Where is your your main thrust? Yeah. Critical infrastructure. So, um, who would you turn to here uh, that you're going to be looking to? Uh, you said the Hudson County Police Chiefs. Mm -hmm. Okay, to discuss for municipal police. Uh, how about the county itself? We have a correctional facility. Are you doing anything with our uh, correctional facility? Have you um, made any attempt to speak to Direct Edwards or? Um, our um, administrator, Abe mm -hmm. Anton. Those are all good prospects for us. So we are, um, so, so corrections um, it, and um, like power generation. PSE and G. L yes. We have two, for example, in Hoboken, yeah. we're going to have a, uh, a extremely large uh, facility that's in the process of being built mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're, I can't talk about it yet, but we're about to uh, deploy at a um, power distribution location, um, not in Hudson County, 
Um, and we're also about to deploy at an oil and gas refinery. So critical infrastructure like that is uh, another part of our business that we expect to grow. I, I would hope that I would encourage you to uh, speak to uh, public service uh, Rich Dwyer mm -hmm. is the governmental relations person because I think uh, those facilities are important, mm -hmm. uh, you know, especially for, for security initiatives. So, I, I mean, um, I mean what, what's the goal that you have uh, with your drone technology? So tell us what's your mission statement? What do you uh, believe with the drone technology? So we believe that um, drone detection should be something that um, private corporations, public corporations, local law enforcement, um, state law enforcement should be able to deploy and, and not violate people's civil liberties. Do you get any requests from private uh, um, entities? We've gotten um, inquiries from people who have very large private Homes, really? Um, compounds, oh, so probably you have, okay, more. So, you so have, we don't have any clients, so we've, but we've been in conversations with some people like that. And um, I guess that uh, the object is to keep the cost within reason. Is it expensive technology? For someone like that, no. No, it's very small. We, um, the way we'll tackle that is we're signing up a new partner who has a, provides security service to, for events, they have their own mobile command center. So they'll go and provide security for someone's private wedding or whatever at their estate or at a municipality. Um, they will also then offer to install the system, the monitoring system that you would leave behind. So what a person like that would do in their home would be more of an awareness, which is really what's going to turn out to be the best mitigation. So that awareness that that person may do would be go inside the house or go undercover so that you're not filmed doing something that you don't want broadcast. Yeah, that's, that's my fear, the invasion of one's privacy, because mm -hmm. it seems everyone's buying drones. Best yeah. Buy sells drones, and you can get drones on Amazon. And everybody for a while there was running into the yeah. drone. Um, the drone scenarios, yeah. as I call them. Um, and as you say, it's a, you have to respect the privacy of the owner of the drone, but at the same time, the privacy of the people at the drone is right. watching and filming. So, you know, where is that balance? Yeah. You know, and, Big I Brother mean, is watching. I hate to say it, because I don't want to be an alarmist, but um, the l most recent thing I read about uh, military application is, um, small 3D printed um, small bombs are being dropped on uh, oil facilities being guarded by U.S. troops. So, you know, it's, you want to, we want to have our infrastructure in place to find the people to stop them from doing that before it ever happens here. Definitely, definitely. Well, Linda, you know, it's been a, a pleasure having you here today. We want to wish you good luck with your company. Uh, hopefully that you can be involved in Hudson County. In, the, in some way and uh, share this wonderful knowledge um, to uh, protect our citizens mm -hmm. and at the same time uh, respect the rights and privacy of others. So with that being said, I hope to stay in touch with you and uh, I'm your freeholder Anthony L. Romano for Stick at Night uh, to the wonderful people of our county. If there are any questions, you can get uh, Linda at aerodefense.tech and uh, please feel free to call her. Thank you.